incredible so the reason that we are discussing this right now is because for anyone who's seeking out for job or trying to make out their career or trying to you know establish themselves as entrepreneurs or looking for the funding or anything of that sort linkedin is a very very good mm-hmm. platform and what's very interesting in rosie's story is that she just started a year ago she did have an intern like intention although her uh her very dear boss recommended that to her but she had an intention that why she want to do it and what she wants to mm-hmm. achieve out of it so i think these two are very important things that when you start that you have that written down once you have done that you have to just start doing it now when i say just start doing it it's not very easy <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly what i want to get into rosie's mind today if you remember let okay for example it's not the first post or whichever post it is when were you most scared of posting any of your po- any of your um, content what was going in your mind and how did you overcome that well, i vividly remember a post it was i think september or october last year and i was so burnt out i'd had a pretty bad sort of mental health day really bad deal with sort of anxiety and exhaustion and i was doing so much that it had just caught up with me and i just i think i just fell in a heap of tears i can't remember if it was during a work meeting or after work and my partner had said the smallest inconvenient thing and i just sort of lost it and so i decided okay i'm going to be real with my linkedin audience which is something i'd sort of prided myself on doing for about six months at this point i thought okay maybe i should be honest and open about going through this burnout struggling not having a good day or having a really bad sort of anxiety to and so i wrote the post i had the photo of sort of i think it was me being all sad or exhausted or me cry or whatever it was and i had it written and it was more or less i think i remember the post starting with I'm really scared to post this, but here we go, or something along those lines. And it was one of the more vulnerable posts that I had done for the first time. I do a lot more now about mental health and being open about anxiety and burnout and what, but it was posting that that was very scary because it was, the. I guess the good thing about LinkedIn is that it's got really strong reach, so it can reach millions or hundreds of thousands of people. That's also the downside when you're sharing a photo, sharing a story about burnout and exhaustion and an anxiety attack. It's like, oh, okay, well, you don't know who's going to see this, but it's also a professional network. So it can be colleagues, my boss, my ex-colleagues, friends of friends, who knows who's on there. So it was that post that I was definitely the most scared to post. And I think I still get nervous to share. Things are a little bit more raw, such as dealing with anxiety or having a bad mental health day. But at the end of the day, I find that those sharing those moments are the most rewarding because so many people are like, Hey, I feel the same or, Oh, it's so good to see someone normalize taking a break or taking a, a rest and not going a hundred percent every single day. Right. So what I understand is that you somehow gathered the courage or probably not on that particular day, you must have waited some time or maybe just let that flow, you know, um, just going mm-hmm. back, to probably you know um for example st- people who are just out of university and they are struggling with that mindset as well and they are scared to put themselves out there because the recruiters are there and they want to see a very <laughs> good candidate so in that context if you would ha- if you really like to you know suggest something to them the when they are creating any sort of content what's the best way to make a move for them i think it's a sort of a two-step process the first would be start creating content that is relevant to the field that you want to go into whether or not it's directly related to your degree or maybe it's a little bit of a sidestep and a bit of a parallel to what you studied start making content that is in your sort of authentic tone of voice and shows your passion or insights to it whatever the topic is whether it's technology or web three or marketing or graphic design, whatever it is, do that first to essentially cement yourself a bit like a thought leader, build yourself a little bit of a portfolio that'll help you stand out. And then the second bit is instead of waiting for recruiters to find you, go find them, connect with people who are recruiters in your industry or connect with even 
HR people or people who have the job title that you're interested in, if it's a, a graduate at a company you want to work with, start connecting with them and introduce yourself up, ask about their journey, the application process. If it's going into other role that's maybe not necessarily a graduate position, but maybe more a first entry level role, you can do the exact same thing. You can reach out to people who either maybe work at the company that you really want to work for your dream company, or maybe they've got a similar job title and similar experience. Those people are really flattered when, well, most people will be flattered and very happy to share their story and their journey. And you can start learning from that, both for people who are sort of almost one step ahead of you or those who are recruiters in the field you want to be in. There's no rule to say that you can't reach out. So leverage building that network and connecting and just make sure that it's really personalized. And I would do that after you start making content. So when someone jumps on your profile, they can say, oh, Rosie is an avid lover for marketing. She's been posting content for three months. That's so great. Um, I really want to talk to her and who knows, maybe it can lead 